welcome to another plugin review so today we have a classic so if you're looking for a pose library if you're looking for somewhere to store your poses body poses hand poses facial poses there is one pose library to rule them all and this is the one that we're going to review in this video today because i found out that there's a lot of people out there they don't know about this uh, plugin or if they heard about it perhaps they haven't used it and they haven't found out how powerful this plugin is so let's get started and let me show you the magic behind this post library let's do it all right so um, we have here our trusty Urban Warrior that I reviewed last week. Uh, go and check it out if you haven't. It's a really good rig uh, for all those that want to just animate or if you're looking for a really good gameplay rig, then this is definitely one that you should consider. Now, the post library that I'm going to talk about is called Studio Library. I'll leave a link down below, but if you do a quick Google search about Studio Library Pose or Pose Library Studio Library or something along those lines, most likely you're going to get this link as most likely your first hit because it's a really powerful, a really flexible post library and it's specifically useful for all those that are just basically either working for themselves or if you actually are working on a studio in a, in a video game studio or in a film studio and you want quickly a place for you to store your poses local to you studio library you can't go wrong whenever you install it it's genuinely like you get a download you unzip the file and then you have a mail file you drag that mail file into your maya scene make sure you have your custom shelf uh, your your shelf that is your own selected because as soon as you drag it this little icon here that you see with this uh, white square and blue square shows up in your shelf nothing else happens it's just this now when you click on it it gives you this um, welcome message right so the very first step that you need to do is create a folder somewhere in your computer that is going to host all the poses that you like ever right so that's basically what it tells you and then it basically opens this to showcase where would you like your folder so i'm going to go ahead and get my folder uh in my in my desktop right so i'm just going to go ahead and like say pose library right so this is going to be my folder from now on that all my poses are going to reside if i look at my desktop right now i can see that there's a pose library folder right now showing up now how do you go about using this amazing tool right it looks very bare it looks very minimal but it can get very complicated or very big in no time so um, i have this rig here just for to showcase uh like how can you take poses but there's no animation to it now to your left here where it says folders um it's blank right now but this is where you're going to actually have your folder hierarchy of where your animations poses are going to reside right so if you right click on top of this it will tell you it will show you new um, and then you can create either a folder a pose an animation a mirror table or a selection set now a folder is normally the very first thing that i do i create a folder it asks you what name would you want to be this folder to be so i'm just going to say body and the reason why i do this is normally i can make a whole new video about this but you should break down your folders into basically a hierarchy that makes sense to you okay so now that i have my body i want to go ahead and create another folder called face and another folder called fingers or something of that of that nature so within the body you can start creating a hierarchy as long as you select the folder that maybe basically within your body you have i don't know if you actually want to have a foot or feet you can go ahead and do that and you create a subfolder within that right now i'm just going to like go ahead to this top level body because i'm just going to quickly showcase what the tool can do but once you have your fold your folders here now when you right click on this inside this square here you have the same menu but in this case this is where you want to put your poses right now if you actually create a folder here we'll basically create a folder within this folder as long as it's highlighted same thing as last time but i'm just going to go ahead and actually create a pose now notice that whenever you create a pose doesn't matter what pose it is you're creating your pose based on world space um, numbers so by that i mean 
when you select the controller and you move this controller, right? You can see here that the rotate Ys are changing, minus 26 or whatever you actually would like to do. As you start animating your pose and start changing it into something that is to your liking, those controllers, all of the controllers are going to have some numbers that are good to you, right? So what you do is basically all the controllers that you would like to select, and in this case, because it's a whole body, I'm going to select the whole thing. All the controllers, what Studio Library is doing is picking up on those controllers and those values and storing them. So the only way this works is that if you have a rig that is exactly the same, doesn't have to be the same model, but it needs to be the same rig, right? The same amount of bones and same amount of controllers, and they match one to one. Because if they do, then a pose that you have on one rig and one controller, then can actually uh, mirror to the other, right? This is specifically very useful for games, because in games, normally you have characters that are normally the same amount of bones and the same amount of controllers doesn't matter if, if they're female or male so you can start using animations you know interchangeably between them right going back to the rig once you have the controller selected of everything you need to actually pose you can go ahead and go ahead and create a pose for for it now this will just give you this menu. Once again, it looks very plain. I like it. Uh, it doesn't seem very obvious what you need to do. But with the first thing that you need to do is basically click on this square, right? When you click on it, it gives you a thumbnail of what the pose is. And this is where the power of the studio library comes alive. Because the thumbnail is incredibly important to tell you exactly what the pose is about. So for example, if I change my arm and I want to highlight that my arm is, a, is the pose and this is the thing that I want to highlight, I can just go ahead and move my, my, my camera in space and then click that uh, square again. And then I have my arm there and I can go ahead and just continue doing that until I have the thumbnail that I want. Let's say this is the thumbnail that I want. I'm happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to give my pose a name. So my pose is going to be arm looking good, whatever it is, right? This is a horrible name, but that is going to be the name. If I would like to actually add a comment, I can do that too. And this is good when you're working in a team environment and somebody else wants to know what this pose is. Sometimes what happens is that you have two poses that are very similar. So this hand is like this. And then the next pose, this hand is like this. When you look at the thumbnail, when you're working in a team environment, both poses look exactly the same. There might be a mistake, but there also might be uh, on purpose. So whenever you go in to read in the comments, maybe one pose is with a Nike arm and the other pose is with an FK arm. So now you know that which pose to use depending on the style of animations that you use, right? So that is basically what you do. You can go ahead and save this, make sure that your body um, folder is selected, save this, and then it goes into your folder, right? So that's pretty cool. Now, one thing to note is that you can change the look of how this looks right now so you can go here right and change the view size so if you change the size of of here on top it changes the size of thumbnails let's say you have very few thumbnails you can change that right you can change how thick the border around the images are pretty awesome right and then if you have more than one image you can change the spacing between the images which is nice you can also hide the label if you don't want to have the label um, or you can actually kind of like have a label over item which i like most right or label under item if you like right and now there's a few more things you can actually group things by category type or um by category type or none you can also uh, get them to go ascending or descending depending on the name that you have on your poses and then here you can sort by what what, what, what you have within this so let's say you have one folder with um, folders and and poses and all kinds of stuff then you can just basically say sort by my folders and then the folders show up into on the top right which is pretty cool and then last but not least here you can minimize the whole thing let's say you only have one folder with all your poses you can just do this and then it showcases everything and then here, this button is actually quite important, especially if you are looking or if you are working within a team because it syncs the file system. And I had occasions where um, I was working with other animators and uh, being, me, me being the lead, I was telling them like, use this library, everybody, here's a shared folder in the drive, in the network drive that you use for the company, put all the poses that you have there 
and then we can share them between this, right? Which is actually how, what you should do. Now, you can only see the latest poses if you click this button here. Click it, and then the poses of your fellow animators will show up right here in this library, right? Um, there's a few more settings, but I won't bore you with it. Definitely um, make sure that you actually go through them, but that is basically the basics of the whole thing. Now, how do you work with this studio library? How do you actually make it like better and awesome and like make sure that this actually is a day to day thing that you want to use? So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to zero out all the controllers that I had here to make sure that they go back to zero so I can showcase to you um, how useful this can be. OK, so there you go. Everything is at zero. Now I have my my pose here, right? I can just select everything just like I did before, have with this selected, with this post selected, go apply. And by applying, it basically goes from zero to 100. And you saw that, that it changed from go, being in neutral to now having a pose, which is exactly what we wanted. And it actually made that difference. Now, the beauty of this is that you can apply it with a certain percentage, right? So let's say that this is your first pose and you don't want 100% of this pose, you want maybe 50% of this pose, right? So you can start to see that there is a blend there of the posing, which is really nice. And you can actually even go like minus, right? Or go past that pose. So it's almost like you get like a, a tween between your posing by actually using this. And you can start to understand how powerful this is because if you have the right amount of poses in your animations as you are actually animating them you can start kind of like using this blend right here because it does it live to see how much or how little do you want from the pose and here's what's even better if you actually select certain controllers so i'm just going to zero everything out again to make sure that i have nothing on them right so let's say you're working with your fingers right right here and I just want the fingers of this pose, even though I have the shoulder and the elbow as well. I can just go ahead and select my fingers, right? And if I apply the pose, I only get the fingers of that pose. I don't get anything else except for the fingers because that's what I highlighted. So that's what it's giving me. So it's a very, very powerful. There's a few more things that you can do when it comes to um, kind of like how you key things and how you actually get additives and stuff. So you can actually untick some of these options that you have here um, to make sure that, you know, they are available. So you can start selecting some of these options automatically. So for example, if I actually go ahead and tick this box here, the very first one, and I move my slider to blend, notice that now I have a key where I didn't have none before, right? I'll do it again just so you can see, but if I actually move my fingers, automatically adds a key because now I moved something, right? The same thing applies if I actually select everything and I go apply and I want my pose. I now have a key and that's because the key option is selected. You can also make it an additive um, and, and, and you can also mirror the pose from one arm to the other if you like. But these ones are normally uh, touch and go because it depends how your rig is set up and it depends if like, you know, the rigs are compatible 100% with Studio Library, which is 100% another video for another day. But just know that for 90% of the rigs out there, Studio Library should be able to actually kind of like grab your controllers, save them in a post library in a way they works, and then you can actually pose them and paste them in a future pose if you like um, and it works really well especially as you are working on your workflow in your animations and you actually want to save that finger pose that you keep doing all the time if you're holding a weapon in a specific way a katana or a pistol or a rifle your hands normally have a tendency to do the same things every so often so if you have a standard pose that you actually would like to reuse over and over again even though you're doing an extra thing with the fingers but your idle pose is like this all the time then it's kind of wise for you to have those poses saved in your pose library so you can do whatever you want and then when you actually go to this pose you just go to the pose library select everything click and your pose is back to normal right and you are sure that your poses are loopable and are 100 percent true to each other and they're exactly as you need it, right? So this is what Post Library does. Know as well, just as a last like addendum, 
that you can also add animations to your post library. And the only difference in the process is that you go through the same exact process, but what you get in the end is just a GIF of your animation playing, right? So if you have a run cycle or if you have a jump, that will be like a jump GIF of your animation right here in your post library. And then you can select the whole character and then paste the animation exactly the same way. You just paste your whole animation with the keys and then it works really well. Once again, this is because it's animation and because this is very rig specific, you need to try it out and see if it works with your rig. Uh, once again, about 80, 90% of the rigs, it should work. But if it doesn't, then you might have to actually go to the outliner or talk to your rigger to make sure that it's compatible with Studio Library. But Without a doubt, Studio Library is incredibly powerful for any animator out there or any small studio in this studio that is looking for a post library that is very, very powerful. Um, and I highly recommend it. It's really, really, really cool. As a last thing, because I'm a nerd for those kind of things, you can actually change the color of your post library for whatever you need, both the background and the uh, accent color, right? You can make all everything super large if you like, if you're into that, or you can just change it into something that perhaps looks a little bit more snazzy to you that makes more sense to you. Uh, whatever pleases the eye. <laughs> but that is it. That is Post Library. Once again, as usual, shout out to all my Patreons to support me every single month. You can see their names here. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have, subscribe and click the like button and drop a comment down below. If you're using the Studio, Studio Library, let me know how you use it. And if you aren't, then after you use it, drop a comment and let me know how useful it was to you. I enjoy reading the comments when people say that it was useful to them and it made their life a little bit easier. So definitely make sure to come back here, drop a comment and let me know. That's all I had for you guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. And until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace.